blown up resin printer tanks, some of the craziest resin fails that I've seen in a long time, and magnetic flex plates that just won't stay stuck. All this and more Print Fix Friday, episode 41. Let's get into it. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome to YouTube's longest running weekly print fail fix video series. If you're new here and you want to get help with your print, make sure to leave a like and get subscribed. Make sure to tag us on all the social medias. The links will be around me as well as in that description and use the hashtag print fix so we can find it and include it in this series. Greatly appreciate your support. We're going to start off with a resin printed tank that decided that imploding it's probably the best move to make. We're then gonna move into a resin cube that had a weird pattern on it. That one was a bit tricky and thanks to our buddy Chris Catlett, we're gonna get it solved. We've got lines going through tiny green resin prints and uh, a lot of things might be wrong there. That, yeah. Then we move into a magnetic build plate that is just not sticking. Multiple times, they're not curing and well, Maybe a little RTFM might help out. Then we move into a crack in resin prints that is caused by probably a thing that you wouldn't actually expect. Keep your workplaces clean. You know what I'm saying. Then we're going to move into a personal fail that has a fun story to it. But you know what isn't a fail? Our sponsor. 3D Musketeers. If you are tired of failing, we get it, print fails suck. And well, it's not a bad thing to end up on this series, right? We don't normally make fun of people. Our goal is to actually help you get your prints fixed and back up and running, hence Print Fix Friday. But if you're at that point where you don't want to bother anymore, or you're a small business that doesn't want to bother from the get-go because these type of things scare you a little bit, you can reach out to the pros at 3D Musketeers. We have over 40 years of combined experience and almost 40 3D printers to help you get your ideas out of your head and into your hands. Rapid prototyping is the way of the game, and now offering high-end 3D scanning as well. So quite literally, from art to part, whether it's a physical object or a digital idea, we can help you make those things real once again. But if you don't have any work for us, it's totally fine. And you want to kick a couple of bucks into that creator fund, you can do so at patreon.com slash 3D Musketeers for as little as $1 per month. Helps us make videos like this, well, pretty often. Or you can also click the join button right below this video. It's a nice button. I think you'll like it. And we recognize that not everyone has some cash to spend. That's okay. A like, subscribe, and a share goes a long way to helping our channel grow and help us reach more awesome people just like you every single day. But failure is always an option here. We want to help you fail a little bit less. If you do want help with your prints individually, you can reach out to us at YouTube at 3DMusketeers.com, and I'll do my best to help you one-on-one. -on -one. It's part of the deal here, right? We want to help you guys make better prints because that's how we as a community all get moving better together. Anyways, enough of this. Let's get into those fails. Two free tips. One, make holes for hollowed models and drain the resin after. Two, don't leave your prints in the vicinity of lamps with UV. I think the tank had a blowout here. Yeah, look at that. Look at that crack. You can actually see where it just kind of exploded. So this piece, wow, look at that. It really did crack a bit, didn't it? Yeah, wow. What is this? One of Russia's tanks? This model has full interior support as well as what I think this is lychee slicer infill. If your model is not hollowed correctly and doesn't have drain holes, you're gonna have a bad time. Quite frankly, I'm still surprised that prints like this even work because eventually they create such a large suction cup that it's likely to explode. This is such a bummer because there's really not a great way around this if you're not the one doing the files. If you're getting pre-supported files from somebody and they're hollowed and they don't have hollow holes, what the hell are you doing? Stop getting models from them. Call them out on what's going on and tag some great people that are really well known for their custom supports, people like Idle Hams or Charo Zuck, who does all of Fotis's work. We have Ty from Tabletop Foundry, who we recently interviewed in a podcast. We'll card to that episode think you might like it then we have the entire atlas team and think what you will of any of them i don't particularly care it's not the flame war i'm trying to get a part of but if the person you're buying your files from isn't pre-supporting properly find a new person and if you made this mistake well to the winner 
goes the spoils, I guess. At least they knew what happened. At least they got it cleaned up. And it seems to be reasonably contained to one model. We can see some ones behind it here. You might want to give those at least a coat of primer. Something to protect that UV sensitive surface from any further damage. And if these models are like the one that did break, a drill bit and a couple of holes will solve this problem at least a little bit. It's not perfect, but it could be worse. Print texture changed mid print. What is this? That's a cube made of resin. No, but seriously, we've got what I think is a suction issue and the comments kind of agreed with me here. This is what happens when you don't have adequate holes. Remember, you need to have ways for resin to get out and air to get in. Normally, you want at least two holes on a model. That way, if one of them is covered up for some reason, you've got the other one to fall back onto. But this is also a massive reason why you should be using UV tools. We did a video just covering just the little surface of UV tools, and I'm sure they've added many more features because they're adding tons of features to that program we'll card to that video so you guys can take a look let me know down in the comments if you want me to take another look at uv tools and get subscribed because you know maybe that is coming up pretty simple though this is just from suction forces the fep might be a little bit loose as well so check the tension on that it might be a thing but if you have such a high suction force chances are it doesn't matter how tight the fep is it's going to be a problem how do i stop this let's take a look at what we got here we've got what appears to be some lines going through the prints yep that's that's what i'm seeing i'm also seeing parts that look woefully overexposed but let's take a look see what the comments say if it's consistently happening in the same spot no matter what they're printing no it's happening almost all the time and almost always in the same spot i would agree here that it might be a faulty lcd screen and there really is no way to fix it other than replace it you can try to reseat the connector but that does require of course opening up the printer if this is a fairly new printer it might be worth returning it printers shouldn't do this but seeing all little bits of resin down there i have a feeling you've had this thing for a minute and i agree here with live coconut if it's not always in the same spot but varies you should change the usb drive with another one the usb sticks that come with resin 3d printers outside of ones like the prusa sl1s and i've seen good stuff coming out of uh, po poly lately the USB sticks are garbage and USB sticks are so freaking cheap. Just go buy an eight gig. You can probably go ask someone for one and they'll give it to you because eight gigabytes is worthless to most people these days. God, I remember when eight gigs was like a hundred dollars back in my day. But the other thing this might be, and since it is consistent, I don't think this is the problem, but we do see this in models with damage to the model itself where it might just decide to run a bunch of pixels through something where it shouldn't and mr <laughs> wilhelm oppenheimer i don't think that's your real name but that's fine there could also be a crack in the lcd that's causing some light refraction that might cause this as well so these are all things to take a look at when you're dealing with issues but i would also say let's take a look at the actual prints themselves because it really does look like you're overexposing run the cones of calibration we're gonna hopefully be doing a video on that real soon as we go to look at testing some awesome resin that we got in from meyer makes i am really excited to test that i hope you guys are too i bought this magnetic plate for my any cubic photon mono 4k this is the second one to fail by what seems like resin getting between the layers i have cleaned everything with ipa and let air dry before sticking it on Anybody else have this issue and know a possible fix? And this is absolutely it. You need to let this thing cure for multiple days. The glue that they use to hold the magnetic sheet onto your build plate is crazy strong, but requires time to fully cure and uh, kind of effectively bond itself for life. Another thing I'd like to point out is that not all flex plates are created equal. This is a big tree tech and I don't have experience with them. We use Wham Bam products here. We actually recently interviewed Peter from Wham Bam. He's the founder of Wham Bam. We'll cart to his podcast as well. And their flex plates are awesome. They got a lot of great bits of kit there, but it even does still require you to leave it on your printer for a while to let everything cure. 
it's important. Cure time matters. And see, here's a good one, right? I have a wham bam on mine, cured it probably for a week, haven't had any issues with the magnet adhesion. One thing I did do is sand down the build plate to rough it up, cleaned it well with IPA, then apply the magnet after drying. I would absolutely agree. A little bit of sanding is not going to hurt this whatsoever because ultimately if you give that glue that adhesive more surface area to stick on which is what you do when you sand something it will stick better you just have to make sure you clean your build plate properly before you stick that magnetic plate on there it's a bummer but rtfm printing with a crack normal on the right crack print on the left yeah it's kind of weird let's see what we got here for background, I printed probably hundreds of these clip slash bar holders with my Elegoo Saturn S with four clips per print on the build plate. Tonight, one of the four clips seems to be printing with a crack. The first time I thought I was just too rough getting it off the build plate, but then the next print, another clip with an identical crack printed. I don't see crack in the LCD, and I've used the STL and settings on literally hundreds of clips before. Thoughts on what might have caused the crack. This individual says it. Let's go back to basics. Run a tank clean, drain the tank, strain it to the bottle, inspect the FP for damage, relevel the plate, check the LCD for dead pixels, refill the tank, and try again. Those are exactly the steps that I would recommend. And well, looks like we got something. Well, thank you for reminding me to go back to basics. I took off the vat before posting and didn't see anything. When I ran a tank clean, I could see a hair between the tank and the LCD. It was sticking on the bottom of the FEP, so I didn't see it initially. Restarting another round of prints, should see in the morning if that was it, but based on the position, I'm pretty sure that was the issue. That's the deal with resin. Anything, and I mean anything, that blocks the UV light will keep the resin itself from curing. I'm fairly certain this is like a smoky gray Soriatech resin. If you're using a clear resin, you might get away with it because there's gonna be some light bleed. But especially on resins like this that have a lot more pigment in them, or especially opaque resins, you're not gonna get a lot of that light bleed. And so those issues where you might have hair or bits of dust or whatever it might be could cause the problem. And this is such a ridiculous, failure right but we all will likely deal with it at some point especially with how long my hair is getting reminds me not to take the vats off the printer that's also why we have dedicated vats for each printer that i never remove but yeah these are great tips right here i don't know if the tank clean is really all that needed but it's not bad to do drain the tank strain back into a bottle always strain it back into a bottle or some other container you don't want to just dump it all back in if there's little bits of cured resin floating around that can actually cause screen failure when the build plate smashes into those pieces of resin but this is all really really good advice so good job so it's not often that i think companies that we talk about actually see our videos we tag them on social media but you know you don't always expect them to watch it, right? We know with E3D, they're watching it, but E3D, of course, supports the channel. They've given us some Revos and some other stuff. And of course, the wonderful opportunity to interview Sanjay almost a year ago now. Gosh, it has been a while. Damn. But this one is interesting. So I get a phone call and an email from Champion X, the people that make the diamond nozzles. We actually did two videos all about the diamond back diamond nozzles and i would show you one but it's actually running right behind me on that printer there because they're pretty damn good nozzles and that one was provided to me by a good friend of mine and the sponsors for those videos was friendship they heard the video and they thought it was funny so they decided to send a bit of a care package over that care package included a shirt. For those of you that understand the reference, this is the brake pad business from Tommy Boy. They actually love Tommy Boy and they put their logo on there. And uh, yeah, they actually wanted to come on a podcast. They're gonna be tomorrow's podcast guests. You, you guys should come out. But they also sent me this box and I wish I would have recorded me opening it because the shirt was well folded with just the logo. And when I unfolded it, it was just absolutely hilarious. And you're wondering, but Grant, this isn't a fail. You're right, not yet at least. They also sent us the rest of their nozzles. They sent the 0.6 and 0.8. So thank you, Champion X and Diamondback for sending that over. But hilariously, that quote that I did in the previous video, about not having the warranty on the box. But like Tommy Boy says, 
Did all they sell you was a guaranteed piece of shit? Look, if you want me to take a dump in a box and mark a guaranteed, I'll do it. I got spare time. Is actually true. This is the limited lifetime warranty for Diamondback nozzles, which is funny because, yeah, it's not. It wasn't easy for me to find on their website, and it's just it's hilarious the way that happens. So yes, I did have a fail. I incorrectly stated that these nozzles aren't guaranteed forever, but based on a video that we found, they took a grinding wheel to this nozzle and nothing happened. So it's guaranteed forever, but are you going to need to use it? I don't know. Maybe they can send us some B-stock stuff so we can test it. And when I test it, I mean, I want to hit it with a grinding wheel myself and see what happens. But yeah, the awesome guys over at Champion X sent over the other two Diamondback nozzles, the 0.6 and the 0.8, rounding out the set here. So that was pretty cool of them. They sent the shirt. I wonder what shirt I'm going to be wearing in tomorrow's podcast. <laughs> but yeah, it happens, right? And the duty of the content creator, me, is to make those corrections when they occur. So actually, the description of those videos has been updated to state that there is a limited lifetime warranty on these nozzles, should you, for whatever reason, need to replace it. But as you saw, yeah, they're damn near indestructible. But I do want you guys to come and hang out with myself and the team over at Diamondback because I think it is going to be a really awesome podcast talking all about how they got from the oil and gas industry into also doing 3D printer nozzles. But anyways, that's all I got for you guys today. Let me know what you think. I love the care package. If more companies want to send care packages, I am totally down for that. It's like the first real like influencer care package I've ever got. He came in a nice leather thing and with the logo lasered in there. They, they took some time for this. I appreciate that. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to comment below what you think about the fails, specifically the few that I had some trouble on. I'd really like to get your opinion on that. But stay safe out there. Don't forget to call your loved ones. And as always, keep making awesome. Have a good one. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video, and a massive thank you goes out to all of our Patreon and YouTube channel member supporters whose names are listed right next to me at the $5 tier and higher. Remember, if you want to get your name amongst the elite musketeers, you can do so by supporting us over at Patreon or by clicking the join button right below this video. Right below me will be the entire Print Fix Friday series, so you can go back and see the entire history, almost the exact amount of time for the answer to life, the universe, and everything. And right next up will be the printer maintenance series, one that we haven't talked about in a little bit, but you should still make sure your printers are well maintained. I will see you guys down in those comments and in the next one. Take care.